2022 and January 2023 minutes. Um, and so I just wanted to put a motion um, to um, approve those minutes. Okay, I hear you now, Malcolm. So uh, we, um, everyone has the link to the December 2022 and January 23 minutes. Also in February, we had a public hearing. I'll just note that um, for uh, which minutes are not required. So right now we are uh, reviewing and approving and or discussing the December 2022 and January 23 minutes and a motion to approve those minutes. I think because Malcolm is in the woods right now, we're having. <laughs> oh, He's in a dead zone. Yes, yes, yes. Can you hear me? All right. So, um, yeah, sorry about that. It, sometimes my Wi Fi, on the, I have to restart the computer. Um, so, I don't know if you, I started recording about a minute and 30 seconds ago. So I don't know if you, it sounds like you already had started. I don't know if you announced the time of the meeting, the date and all that stuff. I did, but I'm happy to announce it again. Okay. So yeah, you might want to do that for re record one, two. Um, yeah. If you want, I put one thing I didn't get to talk to you about earlier is that I put motions after the gallery. So if okay. you want to vote on anything, you want to wait till vote after the public gives provides comment, if they provide comment. That's, but it's totally up to you and your, your committee. Sure, totally. I appreciate that's, that. That's I, all I have. I like that. Thank, thank you, Jeremy. And so, um, my name is. Um, so it's. Um, uh, today is Wednesday, March 29, two thousand and twenty-three. Welcome to the Community Development and Budgetary Priorities Committee meeting. Um, it is seven thirty-nine p.m. And um, my name is Serena Muniz, and I'm the chair of the committee, and I'm joined by my co-chair, who will introduce himself. Welcome. I'm the co-chair of the committee. Meet you all. And so line item number two was to review the draft of the December 22 uh, minutes as well as the January 23 minutes. And so there are hyperlinks for everyone to review so that we can move forward with a motion at the end of our, um, of our meeting. Um, also, just uh, for good measure, wanted everyone to know that in February, this committee held a public hearing to discuss the community development um, preliminary budget that was released by uh, the, you know, the Department of City Planning. Right now it's being reviewed by the um, Office of, uh, uh, the Mayor's Office of Budget Management um, and will be finalized by the fiscal year, um, which ends in June of 23. Uh, there will be a public hearing um, for all of us to attend, should we wanna do that. Uh, so minutes for our public hearing in February are not needed. And so um, that's the reason why that line item number two is there. And um, line item number three, we're very happy to have this uh, guest with us today. We are being joined by the Bronx House and Institution in District 11, uh, the CEO, Mr. Howard Martin. And he will discuss um, all of the wonderful programming available in the Bronx House um, to not only this district, but the Bronx um, wide. And um, we will have questions for him after. But um, Mr. Martin, thank you for joining us. Serena, do you, do you want to start with the gallery? Well, thank you very much. Can you guys hear me okay? I can hear you. Um, Malcolm, were you saying, did you say something? No. I was saying, do you want to start with the gallery or do you want to wait till after? I think that we could start. Um, I, I felt like if Mr. Martin um, spoke and presented first, then anything that he may have said said um, may prompt questions for the gallery. So, what what are your thoughts? Yeah, we, we do that. I think that's better, better, uh, more efficient. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, because uh, uh, a lot of our community, you know, they're here to um, share and impart with us um, different things, but then also they have questions for you. And I, I want to give them an opportunity to be able to do that and then not take away from their gallery session. Mr. Martin. Oh, first of all, th thank you all very much for the work that you do on the planning board and thank you for giving me the opportunity to address this committee this evening. Um, I'm, I'm, if it's okay with you, I'd like to give you a little bit of a history about Bronx House and then tell you about some of the programs that you offer um, from top to bottom and then, um, you know, and then I'll, I'm happy to take questions. I'll, I'll, I'll give you some additional information via our website that you can look up at another time so I don't have to... Uh, talk for the next hour and a half and take up your meeting. So um, again, thank you for, for giving me the time tonight. Um, I work for Bronx House. For, I, this is my 40th year full time with Bronx House. I started there as the team director. I've worked in many, many different departments before becoming the assistant director and then the associate director. And I've been the CEO for the past 15 years. Um, Bronx House has been around about 115 years now. We were founded in 1911 um, in a, as a settlement house, hence the name Bronx House. Uh, and it's funny because I would say over the years, I've probably had about 100 people tell me, you should change your name. You're not, you know, a house really. Uh, but we were a house and we're very proud of the work that we did as a settlement house back then. And um, we wouldn't toy with our name. We do go by sometimes Bronx House Community Center, makes it a little bit clearer, but legally our name is Bronx House. Um, we moved to... Um, Pelham Parkway in 1956, <coughs> excuse me, we were originally founded on uh, Washington Avenue in the South Bronx, moved to Pelham Parkway in 1956, where we've been ever since. Um, we've expanded our building several times over the last, uh, I'd say, 25, 30 years, adding different wings. We added our auditorium in the 70s, we added our swimming, indoor swimming pool, auditorium, senior wing, um, and uh, youth wing. And uh, then we did some renovations in the early 80s where we took over what was a uh, Jewish Board of Children and Family Services clinic that was on top of our building on the second floor. And they moved across the parkway. They're on Astor Avenue now. And we took over that location, um, raised a million dollars and renovated it. And now it's our School for the Performing Arts featuring individual studios for music lessons as well as dance studios. So we offer programs basically from babies through seniors. Um, some of our programs are fee for service. Many, many of our programs now are um, free programming, and I'll I'll talk a little bit about both. Um, because over the past, um, I want to say 10, 12 years, we've um, gotten into more and more government funding. And as you know, with government funding, programs are are required to be free to the community. So, as I said, we we start with um, a, a parent toddler, small parent toddler program, um, and then we have universal pre K we, and three K. So we offer th um, three K classes at two locations. We have five classrooms in our main building at 990, and then we have four classrooms across the Parkway in the Pelham Parkway houses. Uh, Pelham Parkway Houses has two 3K classrooms um, um, and then two 4K classrooms. The main building has two 3K classrooms and then three 4K classrooms. And we're going to, um, we are contracted to open a new location next year uh, on City Island. One 3K, one 4K class. There's no pre-K on City Island itself. So we'll be the first uh, agency to be contracted to do so. Um, that is a free program open to the community. If you're familiar with pre-K and 3K started you know, many years ago by, the, by Bill de Blasio. It was started before Bill de Blasio, but then expanded tremendously under, under May de Blasio's reign. Um, and again, that's, that's a free program. You can drop your child off um, at uh, as early as 8 a.m. and they're there until about 3 p.m. And then we offer, um, for a fee, we offer a extended care program for a working parent where they can keep their child there until 6 p.m. Um, after pre-K, we offer um, many different after-school programs. We offer a program in our building where we pick up at, uh, I think, 10 local schools, bring children back to Bronx House, give them snack, Make sure they get their homework done because that's what parents want. 
and um, and then they can, they can pick different activities ranging from cooking to gym to swim to music to dance and um, and then parents pick up between uh, they could pick up as late as 630 in the evening. Um, that is a fee for service program. However, we have a New York State Advantage grant for that program. So people um, receive a subsidy based on their income. It's really a sliding scale and that can range up to uh, about uh, where they'll instead of paying $300 a month, they could pay $100 a month based on income. Um, after our, our after school programs, we're fortunate to have a grant from our city council member that provides us with um, a teen program. Teens come for, um, we have teen lounge that's available to kids. And one of the most important programs we've offered over the years, and this goes back many, many years, is um, free SAT tutoring. Um, you know, it, it, ki kids in the Bronx don't have the opportunities that kids in the suburbs have um, where they can get tutors, they can go to Huntington Learning or, or it used to be Stanley Kaplan. Um, those are very, very expensive programs, and I'm um, sad to say that our public schools don't do enough, nearly enough, if anything, for high school juniors and seniors who are looking to go to college. And um, to, to that end, we've been offering SAT programs on Saturdays. Um, when schools were requiring SATs, we were getting about 40 kids per class. Some, sometimes we had two classes running at the same time. Um, now it's a little not as as um, popular because many many colleges are no longer requiring SAT, um, but it's it's SAT and ACT uh, tests are one of the ways to get money. So um, you know if you want to if you want to look at uh, going to Harvard and you have the grades, but don't have the eighty thousand dollars ninety thousand dollars a year to spend on it, if you can get an academic scholarship via the tests, I, I'll be. Perfectly frank, um, both my boys, you know, did took took uh, part in SAT tutoring, and um, one went to Seton Hall, the other went to the University of Maryland. He's now uh, he's an astrophysicist at the University of Delaware, and they only were able to do this because of the grades they got on their tests. So we strongly encourage kids, even though it's not required, um, to to take to take the SAT, to take the ACT. Um, and you know, try to try to get their tuition bumped. Um, <clears throat> so um, after our team programs, we also offer um, um, college prep programs where we actually take kids to different colleges, both private and public colleges. We'll go to SUNYs, we'll go to CUNYs, and we'll take them to a couple of private schools just so they can see what's out there. Um, we actually, I'm going to talk a little bit in a little while about our day camp and we do that in our day camp too with our team program. Our day camp, our teens travel, uh, they'll go to a city, they'll go to Boston, Philly, um, all up in Albany and Lake George and we rotate these trips and every time we go to a city we actually go to a college while we're there so kids can get an idea of, of, of what's going on and one of the things that I've always um, hoped for is that one or two kids come back from these trips. Again, we've been to Harvard, we've been to Georgetown, um, that they come back and they say, Ma, I want to go to Harvard. Ma, I want to go to Princeton. So um, hopefully, you know, <laughs> with the SAT, that'll give them the, the same advantage that kids outside of uh, the city have. And um, I, I hope we're making a difference. We don't have the ability to follow up. Um, we don't get we don't have the availability to get the test scores um, unless parent voluntarily gives it to us, but we're hoping we're, we're making a difference in this area. Um, then we have um, senior programs that are funded by the New York City Department for the Aging. We have a hot lunch program in our building. We serve about, um, we're, light, we're contracted to serve about 75 meals per day, but we get about 100 people per day. We get many seniors through something called the Silver Sneakers Program. You may have seen some of their commercials on TV. It's a free membership to the to a fitness center. We're a participating fitness center. They get use of our exercise classes, our gymnasium, and our swimming pool. Unlimited. There's no limit as to how many times they can come. Uh, we also offer about five or six different um, exercise classes in our senior center. And our senior center offers everything from knitting and crocheting to dancing, 
to to uh, you can you can pop on our website. I'll give you the address at the end and and see that you know there's many many activities. So even if you don't want to come for lunch, and we have plenty of people that don't want to come for lunch, they feel you know we've heard everything from like I'm not old yet, I don't need lunch, or they just don't want the institutional you know food. And sometimes so I've many many times I've seen seniors sitting in the lobby during lunchtime figure trying to figure out where they're going to go for lunch so um but it, it's there it's available it's a dollar 50 contribution it's a voluntary contribution no one no one is denied a meal and what what i find a little bit unfortunate is it's you know it's a standard meal it's three ounces of a meat it's a vegetable it's more healthy options now than ever um, but um, it always bothered me to see people taking, again, it's not a big meal to see people taking the food home so they have half a dinner. To that end, one of the things we're working on with the foundation is trying to get funding for a healthy breakfast program. Because um, I, I can't tell you how many times um, we have to call an ambulance in the morning because someone in an exercise class f passes out. And, you know, you, I would say nine out of 10 times it's because they haven't eaten breakfast. And they and their blood sugar pummels and, and 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 then I always have someone screaming in my face. Oh, you're not supposed to eat before you before you exercise. And I tell them, no, you you are supposed to eat before you exercise. If not, this is what happens. And I would say again, probably ninety percent of the times we have to call an ambulance for seniors because of something like that. Um, so we're we're happy to we serve lunch five days a week, um, twelve months a year. And, you know, we, we do have, um, we're not hitting our capacity. Um, none of the senior centers in the city are hitting their capacity since the pandemic. Still many seniors that don't want to come and sit in a room with people that are not vaccinated. And um, we can't require the vaccination. We, our staff is vaccinated, but we can't require vaccination for members to come. And um, it's unfortunate that people won't come to a senior center that they need because of that. <clears throat> but you know it's it's um it, it's been a scary time for many many seniors we we do a lot of uh, phone support all throughout the pandemic um and we continue to do phone support for some seniors who aren't coming to us and we're hoping some at some point they'll come back to the building and participate in the program about a year ago we took over our uh, we took over a NORC and if you're if you're familiar if you're not familiar with the NORC it's a naturally occurring retirement community um, its goal, it's run by, also run by the Department for the Aging. Its goal is to keep people in their homes and not have to put them in, whether it be assisted living or a nursing home. So we have, we work with VNS. Um, th this program is located outside of our building. Uh, it's located in the Pelham Parkway houses on Williams Ridge Road. And it serves about uh, 50 people, 60 people a week. Most of them come three, four days a week. We've also partnered with them with our senior center. To me, I, I always thought it was a good marriage, a senior center in a Newark. We bust them over so they can get lunch and take some of the exercise classes and go in the water and swim if they want. Um, and, um, you know, it, it, we've been we've had this program for just about a year now and we're, we're still learning a lot about it. And it's it's an important program for communities. And again, its goal is to keep people living in their homes in the in their in their communities and not have to move to an assistant living or a nursing home it, it's going to happen sometimes but for the most part if we can push that you know three four five years that's one of the goals again we took that over about a year ago <coughs> uh, and in the build one of the things that the north people really love is um in our building um through a discretionary grant from city council we have a senior computer lab Matter of fact, last year we replaced all the computers. It's 10 computers. We offer beginning classes, we offer advanced classes, and then we offer open time. And I think um, we've seen a little bit of an uptick post pandemic because, you know, for a lot of seniors who weren't computer literate or tablet literate, um, they pretty much got shut off, shut off from their families and friends <coughs> during the pandemic. So um, I think now um, we've seen more and more people taking the beginner courses. Uh, I think we had a waiting list recently, and um, I think there are many people that don't want to, should this happen again, God forbid, they don't want to end up in that same situation. Um, in addition to um, the Senior Center, we offer many, many other free programs, health fairs, blood drives, vaccination clinics, 
Um, and there's also a side of us that's fee for service. So we're about an $8 million agency right now. About um, four and a half, five million is, through, uh, is uh, brought into the agency via government funding and free programs. And then the other programs that we do charge fees for, uh, we try to keep our fees at a nominal rate. We, we have a state of the art fitness center. Uh, we have a heated indoor swimming pool. Um, we offer about uh, 15 exercise classes a week in the evening, and it's a one price deal. You pay one price, you get use of the gym, the pool, all the exercise classes. And um, we are, uh, we're not Planet Fitness for $10, there's no doubt about it. Um, our membership fees um, are um, for a year for an adult is about $530. It's payable monthly. Uh, or you can save a little money and pay it all up front. Um, we are, um, we're cheaper, well, while we're nowhere near Planet Fitness, we're cheaper than um, LA Fitness in the community. We're cheaper than the, the new YMCA, which I was shocked to see what they charge in, in that Eden Wall community. And I'm not sure who really goes there, but we also offer swim classes for children. And to, to me, that's one of the most important programs we offer. Um, I'm, I'm tired of reading about children in the Bronx and in other communities that die because they jump in water and they, um, you know, drowning is panic. And if you don't know how to swim and all of a sudden you're in the middle of water, sometimes you don't realize you, you panic. And that's how these kids die, whether it's at a beach or in a pool um, or landing a plane on the, uh, in the Hudson River. Um, you know, so we, we've been very proud of our, our Learn to Swim programs. Um, I, I always tell tell people um, that we're not going to make your child into an Olympic swimmer. If that if that's what you're looking for, we're not the right place. Our goal is to make them safe in water, to be able to swim across the pool, to be able to swim the length of the pool, to be able to to be safe and fearless in the water. Um, and that that's our goal. And we serve about uh, probably a thousand kids in between four semesters over the year. We run a, a fall semester, 10 weeks, winter, spring, and then summer, um, where they come twice a week, a little bit more. Um, we also have a uh, school for the performing arts where we offer, we have about 600 kids that take music lessons a year. That, that is um, a fee for service program. It's, it's uh, probably one of our more expensive programs. Um, and then we also have a dance school as part of performing arts where you can take anything from hip hop to advanced ballet. And we have about 200 kids that participate in our uh, dance school over the course of the year. Um, finally, the, the, the program that helps us um, live on from year to year is our summer day camp. We operate a summer day camp up in Rockland County. We bus kids from the Bronx on air conditioned buses, take them to Pearl River, New York, uh, two years ago, uh, we had we built two brand new pools, two brand new home bases. We have a rock wall. We have a um, climbing tower. We have archery. We have uh, obviously swimming twice a day. Every kid gets instructional swim. Every kid gets free swim. Um, you can't have one without the other. So you know the kids that never want go in the pool for instruction, they know the rule is you want you want to have free swim in the afternoon. You got to go in for instructional swim in the morning. Um, and again, our goal there is it's, it's a seven and a half week program. Our goal is to teach them to be water safe. And um, I can't tell you how many kids, parents have told us my kid learned how to swim this summer. I'm shocked. I, I wasn't a swimmer. And um, <clears throat> it's always been a goal for us to, to do. It, it's not a, a it's not a, a really cheap program. It's not a, you know, there are camps that are much, much more. Our camp is about. Um, $420 a week for a member. We offer half week, uh, half season, which is four, uh, four weeks about, and then full season, which is um, 447 a week. Um, our youngest ones stay at the campgrounds all uh, most of the summer. They take two or three trips over the summer. And then as they start aging, <coughs> our uh, third through fourth graders travel once a week, our fourth our uh, fifth through sixth graders travel twice a week on trips, and then our teens travel four days a week on trips and come to the campgrounds once a week. We do overnights, we do late nights, and we also do summer learning. About four or five years ago, I was standing in front of the building waiting for the camp buses to get back, and I was listening to some parents have this 
discussion about how they can't get their kids to pick up a book from the last day of school to the first day of school. And I did some homework at that point and I found, um, have you ever heard the expression, Lear some learning loss? A child can slide back almost two full grades. If they don't pick up a book from the last day of school to the first day of school, they will slide, they can literally slide back two full grades. So that next summer we introduced reading. So our youngest um, do reading twice a week with a specialist. Then after that, about a year or two later, we introduced math. And then a year or two later, we introduced STEM. So now kids get, the younger one get reading and writing, the middle, the middle, group get some um, reading and math, and then our older ones get uh, STEM and usually reading. Everybody gets some reading. And th honestly, um, if it's done right, kids don't mind it. It's not like, oh, we have school, you know, uh, we have reading. It, it's never, I've never had, never had a complaint from a parent about about having a summer learning program. I think they're, they're thrilled, especially if they have, if it's a big fight for them to get their kids to pick up books and read. Um, we've been fortunate to get um, donations from some of the big publishing houses in New York um, to stock our, our, um, our, our library. And last year we had a donation from someone who dedicated the library. Um, so it'll keep it going for many, many, many years. But again, it, it's it's not our cheapest program. Um, it's, it's a, again, it's about $3,200 for the summer, for the full summer. Uh, we do, however, provide um, over $250,000 in fee adjustments and scholarships based on income. <clears throat> so do, do I have the ability to share? Yes. I do, okay. So can you see my website there now? Yes, I can see it. Okay, so I, I just wanted to give you the address, the um, our address for our website. It's it's www.bronxhouse.org. And um, it has all of our programs on here. So um, I should have told you that before, so you didn't have to take notes. You can pop on and see some of the programs. Our fees are on the website. Um, everything from pre-K through seniors. Um, and um, you can also go on our Facebook pages. We have a Bronx House Community Center Facebook page, and then we also have a Bronx House Day Camp Facebook page uh, where we put up a lot of pictures about uh, summer program and camp. And I'm happy to take any questions people may have. Well, Mr. Martin, I just want to to let me lower myself because I'm hearing myself. Okay. okay. At least with me. So um, I just wanted to thank you for taking um, the time to walk through uh, the Bronx house. Um, it, it, first of all, not that we need an introduction because um, we're very familiar with your institution here in this uh, district. But um, just recently, we had a town hall, um, I would say about maybe six weeks ago with our senator, Senator Rivera, um, and the community overall expressed that there are um, express the need for youth programming, right? And so as a collective body, the community board, um, you know, is working to put together different programs in this particular district so that we could um, offer to the senator so that he could see where there could be pockets of need. Um, we know uh, the services that the Bronx House offers. Um, I'm very familiar with it. Um, we also do know that um, for um, certain areas in our district, um, I would say a household medium income would could be anywhere from forty four thousand dollars a year for maybe a family of four, right? Um, I read recently, um, and I would say as, as recent as last week, that right now making $100,000 a year feels like you're making $35,000, right? And so what we're trying to do is to learn from you, and we're, we, we want to try to make this a partnership in when you mentioned that um, 
the Bronx House probably is about an $8 million institution with um, four to five million um, with from federal funding, right? And the other being offset by actual, um, you know, fee for services. We're trying to figure out how we can um, uh, alert the community where if it's, you know, $100 is a big difference between a hundred and three hundred and fifty dollars a month. Um, that's that's I, I so I, I'll just I just want to finish what I'm saying and I don't, I don't want to bombard you. So that's one aspect because right now we understand that if we're looking at do I pay for my child's um, maybe private or parochial school education or do I pay for their extracurricular activity? I got to kind of weigh that out. Um, additionally, um, the um the other so so i'm going to just stop there because i do uh, somebody remind me about the sat and act because um i i wanted to to bring that up but i don't want to take up too much time because i know a lot of people may have some questions but first of all thank you for everything that you shared and for everything that you're doing in the community thank you i i, I agree the, the 100,000 isn't what it used to be there's no doubt about it and um i remember at one point our cap was like $50,000 made more than 50 you weren't eligible for for scholarship but but in in this day and age i i um it's it's almost sad that people with a hundred thousand dollars need assistance in this day and age and that it's funny i just gave somebody a, um, a music school scholarship and she wrote me this long letter i'm sure the committee is not going to consider me because my income is so and so and we gave her like a 200 dollars scholarship on a music school lesson um she has an autistic child and music was recommended and you know we we don't just um look at your tax return and say that's it we we meet with people for scholarships, whether it's day camp, whether it's music school, and we'll take everything into account that, you know, whether you're paying for a private school. Listen, we, we understand the public schools aren't what they were 35, 40 years ago. Uh, and, um, you know, so we, we'll take that into account, too. Uh, we don't just look at the bottom line and say, sorry, you make too much money and that's it. But you do have to show, you know, you have to show that you've paid tuition. You have to show, you know, your tax return. But, you know, again, we, we, I would never have thought 10 years ago that we'd be giving scholarships to people over $100,000, but we do now. And again, it's, it's, I think, you know, obviously we all know it's gotten much worse over the past few years and a dozen eggs for $12 or whatever the cost of eggs is right now. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, it is what it is. And if we can help. Um, you know, one of the things we do is we use our day camp. The money that we make in our day camp program goes back right into the building to subsidize other programs. Uh, we don't get money. We get a very small grant from UJ Federation for day camp scholarships, but outside of that, nobody gives you scholarship money. Uh, and that includes elected officials because I we've asked, but it's it's you know it, it's you know it, it's cash, so it's very difficult to get like a cash grant. Um, there are cash grants, but it's usually for people to pay their rent or people to buy food and things like that. But to send your kid to camp, none of the electives are able to give you a cash grant. Um, so we we work with our elected officials to to get as much as possible to bring in as many free programs as possible. And again, we we make money on day camp, and we don't make what we used to make, but we make money on day camp, and we try to use some of that money to subsidize other programs and provide scholarship assistance. Um, for both camp and for other programs as well. I believe you're muted. I know, I know Malcolm wants to share. <laughs> um, so while he fixes that, um, when you mentioned the SAT and ACT college prep program. You mentioned that you, oh, I'm sorry. I have to do this. Okay. You yeah. mentioned that um, you took um, uh, pre-college students to tours, on tours to different colleges. Did you ever take them to any um, historically black um, colleges? Because, I mean, you did mention Seton Hall, you mentioned Harvard, you mentioned that, but like, did you ever take them to any of those types of colleges? Well, we visited Howard in DC when we were okay. up there. Um, sometimes we'll go to the school that gives us the, the best. We'll, we'll, you know, we try to spread it around so we don't go 
to Harvard. We don't go to Harvard every year. We go, went to Harvard once. We went to other schools in the Boston area. Um, we went to Georgetown, but we also went to Howard when we were up there. So the answer would be we try wherever possible. Okay. Do you hear me now? Yes. In any given year, how many scholarships do you give away? I mean, um, like well, for, for for day camp alone, we probably have about 250 people that are on the scholarship rolls. And then we probably do about another 100, 125 for our music school and dance school. And um, we will never turn someone down. We don't we don't have a scholarship fund for sports and fitness and aquatics. But if someone makes the request, we'll we'll take a look at their we'll, we'll consider them for sure. In, in regards to inflation, because you know inflation is a big deal right now, and in, in regards to you know people are not feeling like they're getting enough bang for their buck. So I guess one concern is the cost. Of the memberships, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have, do you know like annually, like on average, how much you probably increase the prices? Um, are you looking to increase prices going into the future, and will aid also increase along with that? It, it uh, the truth the truth is our fitness center is probably one of the programs that hasn't gone up. We did raise our rate this year slightly, I think, but I would say we haven't raised that in five or six years. Um, because once Planet Fitness opened up in the community, you know, we, we lost a lot of, look, $10 is $10. We lost a lot of people to Planet Fitness. Um, so we, we've been very weary with, with sports and fitness and, and aquatics, and we probably raised that price less. Despite, you know, now paying $18, $19 for a lifeguard, um, where 10 years ago we were paying $7.50, $8, $9 for a lifeguard, We've we've been very gentle with sports and fitness because we know we have super super competition in the community, you know, and, and we're going to lose people to Planet Fitness. We, we it happens all the time. The fortunate part of that is if you've ever been to Planet Fitness on White Plains Road, we get a lot of people that come back after a couple of years for whatever their reason is. They miss the classes, they don't have a pool, they don't have you know. But um, fit fitness the fitness fees have probably gone up less in. Maybe they've gone up once in the last, I want to say, five, six years. Okay. And and the daycares? Day, day, day camp goes up every year. Day camp, unfortunately, day camp goes up every year. Or you know, we pay um, we pay over three hundred fifty thousand dollars for the for the campsite every year. You know, our buses our buses are five hundred and fifty dollars per day per bus. Um. You know, staff are, are, matter of fact, that's one of the biggest challenges we're facing today is, you know, competing. We used to pay like a college kid would get a flat fee. Day camps don't pay, um, don't have to pay hourly. They usually pay a fat flat fee, and that's by New York labor laws. Um, but we've had to increase our fees. We've had to double our salary uh, scales for day camp because we can't compete with summer youth employment where kids are getting, you know, $16, $17 an hour. And um, it's it's really it, it's the truth is it's knocked our profit down significantly in day camp over the last few years. But costs are you know the same, you know buses, gas on the buses. I pay seventy five dollars um, a week per bus. We have uh, 11, 12 buses for camp. The big big buses. I had to pay an extra seventy five dollars per bus last year because of the gas costs. Um. I just um, so to your point about the day camps and doing the uh, really quick math, right? Even though I know that the reason why, first of all, day camps are really super important, a hot commodity, right? It gets our children maybe out of um, the 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 urban environment into different areas. Um, but thirty two, I believe it was thirty two. Maybe you mentioned thirty two hundred dollars. Um, and doing a quick math, that's about $457 a week for seven weeks or a little less. Seven so, and a half, it's about, it's uh, seven and a half weeks. So I just put up our, um, our fun bunch camp is our youngest camp for children in first and second grade. Um, you'll see some of the activities they have and you also see the fees right there on the page. Um, so, and, no, um, that it, it, 
yes that so yes you know like even i'm looking at it and i'm like yes absolutely and why not right and i think a lot of our parents would love to be able to offer that to their to to their children right especially during the summer but at and and i know um and I think this is the reason why, and I know this is the reason why we're having this conversation. And it is our hope that we could in some way, shape or form, um, maybe come up with ideas and ways that may be, and I don't know if this is even possible um, as a district like um, CB11, maybe there's a, a, um, a, a scholarship that can be, um, I don't know, formed or anything you can suggest that we can do to help the children in our district be able to benefit from such a program. Because I can honestly say that right now, I mean, I'm, I may have the means to be able to do that, but like that's $2,000 a month you know on top of everything else and so there's a disparity in what our children you're offering such a beautiful extensive program opportunity archery i mean really archery right um that our kids probably you know unless they're in school and they're getting that through some sort of uh, program that's being funded so that's just an idea that i that that we wanted to kind of just toss out there because we really truly want to work together to figure out a way collaboratively that we can work with the bronx house in in collaboration with the community board to then be able to extend if it's if it's um you know boots on the ground if it's you know letter writing campaigns whatever we have to do but we really want to get um we really want our children to be able to partake just like you also finally and then i'll just um i didn't hear anything about the intergenerational sort of programs i know you service seniors and i know you service you know um babies to teens are there any sort of intergenerational programs that bring them both together sure our our um our, our pre-K programs visit the senior center on a regular basis. We have seniors that go up and read to the kids. They love when people come in and read to the kids. Um, our after school program, usually when, by the time our after school programs um, come to, uh, you know, part of the problem is the hours. You know, seni seniors are in the building from 8, 8 a.m. till about 2 p.m., 3 p.m. And that's when the kids, you know, our after school programs are coming in about 3.30 and after. So we can't really mix them. But pre-K is always, is always sang to the seniors. They dance with the seniors. They'll participate in some of the parties with the seniors. Um, but, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I just want to mention one thing about camp before I forget. So we also offer three, I don't know if you're familiar with um, Sonic programs. We, we offer three Sonic programs. Sonic is Schools Out NYC at Middle School 135. There's three schools in that building. We offer three after free after school programs via the Sonic programs. And then we okay. also offer um, three summer rising programs for the middle school students. That's K sixth through eighth grade. And that's summer camp. Basically, if, you're, if you've heard about summer rising over the past few years, um, the morning is spent with teachers. It was it was um, put in pre-pandemic and then expanded post-pandemic um, to to alleviate such a great need for summer school. So kids will go to their classes in the morning, and then Bronx House takes over at twelve o'clock, um, and we run recreational program. We do trips. We have different activities um, um, all throughout the day, and um, that is a free program. The Sonic oh. Middle School after school programs are free, as is our um, as is our um, summer rising program. And I'm going to put how, up, put how up many students? Up. How many students in a given summer, you know, have participated in in those programs? And so, you know, so we're contracted for ninety students per school. So we have about two hundred and seventy kids that participate in that program. Um, we weren't at middle school 135 last year. They had construction going on there, so we were relocated. And we were at uh, middle school, which I was very, very upset about, middle school 144. And if you think, you know, a lot of people from our community traveled over the middle, middle school 144 for the program, they didn't. And we knew they wouldn't. 
Um, we we are um, they were trying to relocate us again this year. We fought it and fought it and fought it, and with the principal's help, we were able to um, we were able to make sure that it's going to be in our. We're, we're about ninety percent sure it's going to be at middle school one thirty five, but each of our three middle schools they are serve about ninety to one hundred kids in the summer programs. Okay. And Is those are both our free totally free free programs. Free programs. Oh, uh, Mr. Martin, we have a. I'm sorry, Martin. Um, I'm sorry, Malcolm. Were you saying something? No, I was going to ask if there's any way to increase the, the capacities of schools to offer for more students. Um, we we have trouble filling the 90. You know, there's a lot of Sonic programs. There's a lot of uh, summarizing programs in the community, so I don't think there's a need for more than the, you know. We have trouble filling the slots that we have. We do get there eventually, but. Um, it, it's definitely, uh, you know, I, I actually put in for an additional 150 slots this year, 50 per school. So I'm hoping we get them. I'm not sure we'll fill them, but I'd rather have them and not fill them than not have them. Okay. And are they, one more question: Are they limited to just the students from that school? Or no, no. You can mean? go. You can go if you have if you have a middle school child, they can go to school in New Jersey. If you live in New York City, they can participate in the summer program. That's wonderful information. Do you have any uh, like flyers or links to um, to this program that you're talking about? Because we can really um, try to start before the summer to promote this um, via our social media as well. Um, I just so I, um, we're working on our publicity right now. Registration. I was on a meeting today with DYCD. Registration for Summer Rising will open on April seventeenth. We're just waiting for the link. It's um, registration goes through. Unfor unfortunately, they make it really hard. Um, we we will help people if you don't have a computer or you're not computer literate. We'll we'll get you a hard copy application and we'll enter it into the system. We have a you know I mentioned we have a senior computer lab. We'll let people whether it's summer youth employment kids that don't have computers or parents who need to register for UPK or or summarizing, we'll let them come in in the evening and use our computer lab. But April 17th, um, I will make sure we send some information over to the planning board office. Um, we don't have it out yet. We're still getting some information. I want to confirm it's going to be at 135 before we put publicity out. Okay. So, and I know we have a board member that has a question. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Martin, you were going to, you were going to finish. No, no, I'm saying as soon as we get all the info, we know where we're going to be. We, we know we, we know it will open April 17th. Um, and we are allowed to over enroll a little bit in that program because we know that kids don't come every day. Okay. But, it, you know, all, all of our information is on our website. I know, I know, business. but you know what? So, uh, what's, you know, it's, it's just always good to have these conversations because not everyone, you know, some people are like, you know, some people just, um, are good with hearing things or visually not necessarily reading, but v video. Um, and the more we can disseminate the information, you know, is, uh, but we know, cause I've been, we've been on the website and it's just offers a, a, a variety of services. Um, you know, the swimming in, in particular was one that, um, I looked at for, you know, personal reasons. Um, so yes, everything is on the website, but we like to have, you know, conversation. And I know that Ms. Rodriguez, um, part of CB 11 has her hand up. She's had her hand up for a while. So I wanted to give her an opportunity to ask a question. She's part of our community board. Cindy. Thank you, Serena. Thank you, Howie, for joining us in this meeting. Um, I have one question and one comment. Um, I'll start with the question as far as something like summer rising. Um, one of the reasons that I've missed a lot of opportunities for one of my children is because I don't find out that he's going to summer school until almost the end of the year. And then at that point, it's almost too late to really get him into anything because deadlines have already passed. Um, I don't know if you have any advice on how to navigate that. Um, and then just as far as comment, I have tried in the past to sign up one of my kids for, you know, let's say theater or something like that. I find the website a little difficult to navigate. Um, it, it's not as 
kind of cut and dry when you select, you know, you can choose a category and it tells you to register. It's just a little difficult to suss out all the little details. So that's just yeah. the feedback from Yeah, the no, I, I agree. Um, we do have a new website. I don't know when the last time you were on it was, but we have a new website and we actually have a new registration program that you can access right through the website. I'm hoping it's uh, I'm hoping um, it, it's a little easier and more friendly now. Again, our, our um, we you know we try to improve our technology from from time to time. But I, I just want to share one thing with you. We I understand the summer school issue because you know we we deal with it you know yearly. But one of the things we do with day camp, I would tell you register your child for day camp, and you'll see in our in our contract. That it tells you if your child has to go to summer school, we give you a full refund. We don't keep a penny from you. And we do that because we understand that sometimes you don't find out till days before camp starts that your child has to go to summer school. Not, I'm not sure why that happens. And I don't think it happens anymore because I think the summer rising program has replaced summer school for the most part. Thank you, Howie. You're welcome. But take take if you can if you have a chance take take a look at the website. Again, we put a new website in. I want to say just the, maybe 12, 14 months ago, um, and I don't know if you were on it prior to that or or since then. But take a look at it, um, okay. and it's much much more easy to navigate. It's more user friendly. Um, awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And so, Howie, I think we wanted to take a, do, we wanted to take this opportunity to offer the gallery, um, you know, a moment to ask any questions. Sure, happy. Would anyone that's joining us um, like to ask Mr. Martin a couple of questions? I see that we have Ms. Diana Finch, we have Ms. Danielle, and Mr. Ephraim Gonzalez. Um, Yep, yeah, you're joining us today. If anyone would like to ask Mr. Martin a question in regards. Yes, sir, to... I have my hand up. Oh, wonderful. Okay, I see you. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Martin. Um, so one question is about the pre-K and 3K. That's just concurrent with the public school year. So not during the summer? No, it's not during the summer. No, right. it's, okay. uh, it's, it's school year. It's 176 right. school days, just like a public school program. Okay, and we then do, for the do offer, for that age, do we do offer a, a program in the building, a camp program in the building? We don't take them up to our campsite. It's a little much, you know, to put them on a bus, and and so we do offer something in the building for that age group. And then for the summer camp, my daughter went one year to the summer camp, and then she also went some years to YMCA run summer camps. And I was wondering if you had considered doing a summer camp that didn't go all the way out of the city, but was modeled more like the Y camps where they do trips, but not necessarily every day, or they do more local trips. Yeah, yeah, we, we haven't because the, the truth is our camp that we run is very, very different than a camp that's run in, so indoor, in, a, in an indoor building. And it's, it, yes, they'll take some trips out, but for the most part, it's a very different kind of program. It's an outdoor experience with outdoor swimming, and camp, that's what camp is supposed to be. Camp's not supposed to be in a school building for the most part. It's supposed to be an outdoor program. Right. With, no, I realize, but... I more like the summer Y camps, which a lot of them are outdoors most of the time or more than half the time. And they do a lot of trips like to different zoos and parks and playgrounds. Stay, po stay pools, yeah. Right, that might be more affordable for more people in the neighborhood than a full summer camp that goes all the way upstate or out of state every day it, 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 pro it probably would be um you, you know it, it, i would t t five years ago ten years ago i would have said oh it's, we can run it for much 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 less but I don't, I don't even know if that's the case anymore between the cost of buses you know bus drivers are one of the hardest you know hardest positions to fill but uh you know bu bus companies all over the state have had to cut back 
um, on their busing. You know, in my, in my community, you used to get busing if you lived a mile or more away. They had to increase it to three miles because they can't get enough drivers. So between the between the cost of busing and the cost of staff, which are probably two of the higher uh, higher um, expenses, I'm not sure how much cheaper it would be to run a summer program, even even if we ran it in Bronx House and used our indoor pool and, and took them on some local trips. Um, you know, we wouldn't we wouldn't um, I, I wouldn't put kids on subways and buses that we would have to can still continue to rent, um, you know, charter buses for the most part. And the, and the other thing is the cost of trips have, have significantly increased over the course of the year. So, yes, it probably would be cheaper or cost would be cheaper. But um, I don't think it would be as significantly cheaper as it would have been 10 years ago. But that you know we're hoping that summer rising fills that void. You know it's good. It's it's it, you know it's available from K through through um, eighth grade. It's not. I don't think it's available for high school. I don't think there's a high school option. But hopefully, because summer rising will do trips. They'll do some trips once a week, usually on Fridays. They'll get a little schooling in, and they'll um, you know they have a lot of specialties in the school building. So we're we're it's one of the reasons we wanted to. Um, jump jump on the bandwagon for summer rising and so there was an option for parents because look we know we know camp's expensive there's no doubt about it um it's an experience it's a great experience for kids but we know look it, it, and the truth is we have about um we had about 530 kids in camp last year but those are not 530 kids that pay for camp we have um about 170 kids that come through 1199 the health and hospital workers union part of their child care benefits uh. And, and the union pays for them. And um, and then we have about um, 20 kids that come from a charter school um, in the South Bronx paid for by a donor, a private donor. So that's, you know, that's 200 kids. That's almost 50% of our camp, mm -hmm. a little bit less, maybe 40%. But we know it's expensive. We try to give, we try to increase the amount of money we give scholarships. But even that, you know, the, the maximum scholarship, unless there's a hardship case, on the maximum scholarship we'll give a family is usually about six hundred dollars off mm -hmm. the fee. One of the reasons I asked is that we found out last summer when we offered a like three four hour in the morning um, summer basketball camp just in the park that there were so many parents looking for some kind of summer activity for their kids, and they just couldn't find anything that was like a little less than the Bronx house summer camp price. Well, what, what, why, why wouldn't summer rising fit into that? You know, it's less money. It's a free program. It's a good program. It's a solid program. We get, you know, yeah, but I think not everybody is it's in the school summer program. rising. A lot, lot, well, I, I think a lot of kids don't want to go to the summer rising program because you're spending, you know, three and a half, four hours in school. That's that's a mandatory. I wish it wasn't tied onto it. I wish they said, if your grades are X, you have to go to the morning program that's run by DOE. But if your grades are Y, you don't have to go to that morning program. You can be part of the recreation program morning and afternoon. But unfortunately, they tied them two together. I think it has something to do with the federal money. Mm, probably. You know, to, to help us catch up from the pandemic. Um, but the summer basketball camp, it, it was disciplined and learning you know because we're learning physical skills they were learning how to play with other kids they it wasn't just entertainment oh yeah no no, no absolutely uh, you know my kids I mean, have participated it, in baseball camps and basketball camps it's 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 a real skill builder but it's it's also yeah. a skill builder for a certain type of kid because they're very you know they i don't want to say they're very competitive but it's it's no because really, you gotta love basketball very, you gotta... very uncompetitive it was you know boys and girls starting quite young kids who really wanted to try bas basketball but weren't very good at it so they mm -hmm. had trouble you know joining a school team or something um but I, I, there were a lot, I was amazed that. at how many parents were looking for something for their kids either half day or whole day during the summer okay. That they could afford. Uh, I'm money. not familiar with who ran that program. If it was in the community, was it one of the not for profits? No, it was just the Bronx Park e East Community Association and one guy who is a professional basketball coach. Oh, okay. And he charged like 
$30 a day, $100 a week. And it wasn't full day, it was just half day. Right, right. But maybe we can team up with you on something. That's the idea. Mr. Martin, um, I, I believe you're still sharing your screen. So that's one thing. And then we have our chairperson, Ms. Uh, Bernadette Ferrara, that has had her hand up so so patiently, and I do apologize. Okay. I didn't even see it. Uh, she has, I'm sure, a couple of questions. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Serena. It's okay. I think that the when the hand goes on, it, it kind of gets folded into the background. So, so. Uh, Howie, uh, hi. I, you know, I know that I know you for a long time mm -hmm. as part of Community Board 11, and I'm so glad you're still around. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Don't it's, getting, leave it's, us. Getting, it's getting harder and harder, though. You know, yes, I, it's getting, tell me it's getting about harder it. and harder. But because um, we really do need uh, Bronx House, so I, I have a few. I have a few questions. One, um, I, I, with regards to the SATs and the um, the preps, do you also have a FAFSA? Uh, workshop that you help yes. the parents. Yes, okay. yeah, yes, we do. And and okay. um, you know, as as someone who's navigated the FAFSA, it, so have I. <laughs> it, it's it's we do as part of, as part of our college prep. We do financial aid workshops as well as Good. FAFSA, and we we know how challenging FAFSA can be. So we made that yes. a priority over to, over the years. We right. we probably didn't do it in the last couple of years, partly because of the pandemic. But uh, we, we, back. Are, we are back and we are um, looking to do another FAFSA. Uh, it's usually like a two part workshop and it's for both yes. parents as well as the kids. Yes, Look, yes. My, my, my kids, my, I have a son who's an astrophysicist. They couldn't do a FAFSA. I, 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 had had white, FAFSA. I had white knuckle time every single yeah. January. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'll, and it was just me. And I'm like, okay, where am I? You know, it's, but, but my, my son's, um, my son's high school had had, the two part, you know, the yeah. first part yeah. of the year and then afterwards. And it was so helpful, even though I had other family members that had gone through it, when it was time for me to actually get, you know, it was so helpful. And I know that'll help so many, so many yeah. parents. So yeah. please bring it on back. And, the, and those are free workshops for parents. It's not, we don't charge anything for, for those you. programs. They're funded by a city council grant through our city council people. Um. So the other thing I want, I have my notes here. Sorry, um, when I when I was chair of the education committee, one of the things that um, we had been working on is, of course, the the super important need for not only our middle schools but our community center, which Pelham Parkway, Van Nest, and Morris Park do not have a community center. So uh, until that becomes a reality, one of the Thoughts that had crossed, had been brought up to me from a, from other from another person was to try to work with the Bronx House to maybe have a one day a week for the public. Now it's just an idea, and maybe we can talk further about this. But I wanted to introduce it since you were here, and I don't know how that could possibly work out. But um, can I can I ask you to define that one day a week for the public? Well. <laughs> it's it's still in the thought process. Oh, okay, uh, well, I'm happy to another, discuss it and be part of the conversation. Yeah. So, in other words, have it open. Have it. You know, a community center in so many other communities is like in East Chester Garden. You have a community center. You have programs. Most of them are free. Uh, most of them are uh, subsidized. Um, a large portion, a large more than that, uh, the Bronx House would be. So it would be a day for the public to be able to make use of what programs that the Bronx House has as a as a free day. And I know that it takes a lot of money juggling and I don't even know it's po if it's possible, but there is such a need. Um, there is such a need for our communities, our communities to have a community center. They should have had it 10 years ago, 15 years ago. My son is 28 years old. He'll never benefit from it, but there are a lot of families. Um, that I see in other areas. I think at this point we're all um, having issues with um, being low income, et cetera, and a, a public day for families and for their children, whether it be for 
the swimming or um, I, I don't know, we can discuss what particular, but I don't know if that's ever been introduced before, but um, if not, I would like to continue this discussion at some point. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, but you know, I, I think, I think, unfortunately, the days of free community centers um, are are long gone. You you look at the new YMCA they built in in Bain Wall, and there was a sixty million dollar building um, where twenty four of it came from our speaker um, who had access to that kind of money. But I what I, what really surprised me about this magnificent, and if you haven't seen pictures of it, go on their website if you haven't been there. Um, it's a magnificent building, but yes. I was shocked to see that what they charge for programs because they're not in a community that can afford what their fees are. And yes, they, like us, offer scholarships for many of the programs, but they're, they're more expensive. <laughs> they're more expensive than we are in, in many of their programs, including membership. How, are, how is their enrollment? How, I'm sure. You... I don't know. I don't know. Is there any way that you'd be able to find out to do a comparison and actually no, I'd be no, the, curious to know also. The the YMCA doesn't share well with others sometimes. Okay. <laughs> I don't, they don't I don't play know, good in the sandbox. I I would assume they're not drawing a lot of people. I, I mean, maybe their fitness center is drawing because again, I've heard it's a magnificent fitness center, an indoor gym, and indoor pool. It's all brand new. New is always going to be yes. old. And but it's you know the fees that they're charging for a family membership there is is twelve hundred dollars, and a family wow. membership at Bronx House is seven hundred dollars. Wow. Big, wow. big difference. Sw swim lessons are about the same. Um, we're, we're a little bit more, but we offer 10 classes. They offer eight classes. Uh, our, se our senior membership is um, two. If, if you don't have silver sneakers, full membership is $220 a year, uh, $370 for a couple. They charge $552 for an individual senior and then $1,100 $1, for a couple, senior wow. couple. So I, I was shocked when they opened the building and, and, you know, you can go on their website and check out their prices. I'm shocked at, at some of the prices. And I, I don't know who in that community besides, um, you know, maybe, maybe some of the elected officials that helped build it can afford that kind of program. Again, they yeah. got they got um, 24 million from the speaker, you know, through the state. And they got 12 million from the city yeah. to help build it. And um but operations in this day and age are it's what's killing not for profits, you know, paying yeah. you know, competing with, you know, salaries, you know, we're paying eighteen dollars for lifeguards and there's a shortage. And the city city yes. just announced they're increasing the the salaries for lifeguards. It's gonna be over nineteen dollars an hour. Yeah, just I, I see other hands up, so I'm gonna make my 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 other last question. Um is there a page on your website and, and I will check it out where there's quick access to a lot of the programs that are free. In other words, um, instead of having go to go to each individual category, because a, a lot of low income families would probably want to know that information quickly to see if it's something that um, is, is suitable to them. Uh, if there isn't, can I suggest having a quick access for that? Because I, I just know that uh, uh, I would get that 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 question. And the other thing is your fly. Do you have flyers with you have flyers, et cetera, that get that are handed out? I, if I uh, call up and get, give you my address, I'd like to have some of them come to the Van Ness neighborhood Alliance to our area. And oh, also, absolutely. And also to 1 of our schools at 1684 white plains road, which is PS 41. So, um, if you we're, we're happy to publicize for any not for profit group, any community group, okay. any neighborhood association, you know, we're not advertising in our building for Joe's, you know, hot dog shop or something, but for community groups, we're happy. We have a, a stand in our lobby um, where we'll, we're happy to put flyers up. Um, we're happy to do that. And I'm, I'm going to look into, we don't have a tab on our website that's, you know, says free programs. But I'm going to talk to our marketing guy about the possibility of having something. That's a good idea, and I, I appreciate the ideas. Can you put your email in the chat? Is there a chat here? I don't. I'm not a yes. big fan of um, WebEx. Oh, it's it's really it's really not that bad. But <laughs> I know we're all Zoom people, but WebEx isn't that bad. But uh, yeah, there is a chat. Um, if you could put your email address in there, and I I'll shoot you an email and. 
whatever. But if you want you to so highlight much. my, it, it, it's pretty, it's pretty easy. It's Howie H O W I E at bronxhouse.org. Okay, one second. I'm gonna share it with everybody, Howie. Thank you. So H O W I E I E at bronxhouse.org. And that's Thank the word so Bronx, much, right? I just did it. In the chat. Yeah, yeah so. Okay, so thank you, you so much. My um, pleasure. Any any last questions before? Yeah, we we actually do, Howie. So we have um, I, Diana. I still see your hand up. I don't know if you still have a question, but we have um, Danielle that has a question, and then we also have um, Cynthia Rodriguez that has a question. So I guess those will be the last two questions that we'll take, and then after this, um, yeah, then we'll wrap it up. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. Hi, thank you for um, allowing me to take part in this. So I'm a DOE employee. I'm a speech therapist in District 10. And so I just wanted to touch on the um, comment that you made in regards to summarizing. So to be quite honest, um, I've been to, like, I've worked in another school prior to um, transferring to District 10. And we really didn't get clarification on the differentiation between summer school versus summer rising. And so oftentimes, like I have coworkers and colleagues who have their children who are typically developing, who have passed other classes that took part in it. And I think the parents don't understand that it's totally different. And so I just wanted to know if there were any outreach um, like um, initiative that you have taken part in, um, like maybe joining a PTA, because we we typically have like Zoom meetings for PTA, just to allow parents to gain a better understanding of what summarizing is, because I quite honestly had no clue. All my students are like, oh, I don't want to go to you know summer school. But I think that if they heard about all the programs that you offer within summarizing, I think that it would be more um, incentivizing for the parents and the children as well. So I just wanted to know um, yeah. Do you have any plans to outreach aside, like outside of District 11? Because I mean, District 10 is not that far. They're like my school is off of Fordham Road, and so I know parents. They're very dedicated, and they would do their due diligence to, um, you know, make sure that their children are a part of these wonderful opportunities that you discussed. Yeah, you you raised some great points, and and one of, one of the things that one of the um, ways that DOE has tried to explain the difference between summarizing and the difference between summer school is, um, I think they want summer school to be for kids that are gonna be left back. And if your child doesn't go to summer school, he's getting left back, he's gonna repeat his grade. Um, summarizing is supposed to help bridge the gap between, some, uh, between learning loss still from the pandemic. And again, it's a lot of federal money in summarizing, that's why it's still around and still free. Um, but mo be, up up until now, kids in this in their own schools were given the priority, so we really didn't need to um, advertise it outside of middle school 135 to fill it up. Um, and uh, now they're going to allow any child from anywhere to go to any program, and they're not going to give priority to. Um, at least we heard this today for the first time. They're not going to give priority, so we probably will advertise it outside of the middle school 135 community and outside of Pelham Parkway too. For instance, if you work in um, on White Plains Road in Pelham Parkway and you want to drop your child off in the morning, you know this is a great option for you to s send your child to 135. The only difference is he's probably not going to know a lot of kids there, but um, we we will definitely expand our outreach to. Um, outside of uh, the Pelham Parkway community. Yeah, for I just time. wanted to, I just wanted to make you know a point. It's, yeah, it's so funny because I work with middle school students and they're like tired of their <laughs> classmates. So I think it would be more <laughs> of a, a, like incentivizing for them to, to meet new kids, you know, especially those who are going yeah. to high school. A lot of them are just excited to meet new, you know, yeah. friends yeah, but, and stuff, uh, so. Uh, Unfortunately, we we know who makes decisions in most homes. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Who make those decisions, and yeah, you know, I know. And I understand that you know sometimes convenience is convenience. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, if you live, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, and we saw it last year when they moved us to to 144, which isn't that far away, but it's a, you know it's a pain in the neck to get to by public transportation from Pelham Parkway. It's a good hour, hour, and, and we had a lot of parents that didn't want to go. To, and and that's why we really pushed this year to try to get it to uh, be in 135 this year. So we're happy to be back. We're hoping we're supposed to know by the end of the week where we'll officially be. And once we know where we're going to be, we'll start our advertising campaign. And as I said, registration opens up. Um, they can go. To, it's going to be through DOE. 
Um, and, you know, but the publicity will make it clear to people that you can go to any, you don't have to be a New York City public school student. You can go to a Catholic school and, and still participate in summarizing. And they're going to hopefully make that clear in, in the citywide advertising that the that the combo DOE and DYCD do. Thank That's you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for the awesome question, Ms. Danielle. We have a final question from Ms. Cynthia Rodriguez. Yes. Hi, Howie. Um, as far as your fee structure, so if someone, let's say I want to sign my son up for swim class, does that mean that I would have to pay for membership to the Bronx house in addition to the particular class or are they separate? Um, in almost every class that we offer, dance, swim, we offer um, a discount for members, but you don't have to be a member. To give you an example, a 10-week swim class is, um, 10 one-hour swim classes, for a member it's $200, for a non-member it's $255. But there's okay. always a discount for a member. We don't charge extra if you're not a member. We give you a discount if you are a member. Got it. Um, the only other thing I'd suggest is once you find out as, uh, about the summarizing and you start doing your outreach, please, please, please um, email the community board. And I, I actually made a note of that to send Jeremy all of our summarizing flyers. Yes, please. And then also we're going to provide you the emails to our to Jeremy and then our social media committee, maybe Cynthia and Malcolm, you guys can add your emails there um, so that we're oh. all collectively getting it. I'll put mine. Jeremy's good at sending us information, but just so that we can disseminate as quickly as possible, because I know you said, I think it was April 17th. And then I also believe open. Right. But, but by the way, you can go on our website and sign up for newsletters. If you want to go on our website, you can sign up for newsletters and you'll get you can pick different newsletters. You just want seniors to get seniors, but you can get all the e-blast and we do a weekly e-blast out. And then also that that's a very good idea and we'll do that. Um, but also you could also post any anything that you would like on our social media page in regards to any events and programming or anything you can share as well. So um, I believe Malcolm has something to say um, to share or to suggest and then um, I didn't know you yes. had a social media page where we could post items. I'm sorry. Yes. Well, you know, now you do. And so now you can be I'm new, I'm new around here. Now you can be. Yeah. Okay. Years. <laughs> now you can be friends of CB 11. Well, you know, we'll, we'll give you the right. We'll, we'll, well, I'm, 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 I'm part of all your groups on Facebook. So I do see, you know, all your postings on Facebook. Friends of community, the not so friendly people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Friends yeah. of but for, but for the most part, I didn't know there was like a social media page where we can, and I and I will often, by the way, if it's an important program, I'll often post it on some of the community groups. I've done it with Bronx Park East. I've done it with 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 um, Van Ness. I've done it with Mars Park Community Association, uh, Pelham Parkway Neighborhood Association. I'll put up some info. I don't like to clog it up because literally I could clog it up. Never, never, never. Day. The more information, the better. But we have we have or uh, community based organizations here. Ms. Diana Finch. We have our social media committee here. So we'll disseminate all the information. You know, just you know, please uh, continue to share, and we'll follow your newsletter as well. Mother how, how do I? Sorry, how do I sign up for the newsletter? I'm on the website right now. Um, I'm not unfortunately, oh, and okay. I would need to look at that. Um. Can, can you can you shoot me your email oh, address I, and I'll make and I'll make sure that I uh, no, I found it I found you it. did okay I think it's thanks. at the bottom somewhere yep thanks awesome and I mean this is just a suggestion but would it be beneficial if we were to do a informational for the summarizing program in collaboration with Bronx House and CB11 we're we're happy to do that but just keep in mind there's a lot of um, different CBOs that run summarizing programs throughout the communities. But if you wanted to do a, um, a community fair for all the CBOs that are offering summarizing programs, I know um, there's one at 96, there's one at 105 for the elementary schools. You know, we, there's really only one middle school, uh, but you know, that would be a great idea. You know, we, we've often worked with, with CB 11. They've, Used prior to the pandemic, they always had their health fair, their annual spring health fair in our building. Um, and we're always happy to work with with other groups in the community, even though we compete somewhat. Um, there's probably more competition for um, 
um, for uh, elementary schools, the compass programs, and because again, there's only one real. To me, that I only consider 135 the middle school of the community, even yes, though 127. Have a problem with that. <laughs> yeah, even though 127 is close by and 144 is a little further. Okay, okay, yeah. I mean, I think the fair, if, if it's feasible, we, you know, could be quite getting it done just to, you know, ensure that that information is disseminated throughout the community and, you know, people know, parents know that this is shared for them. Happy to help in any way possible. Again, you, ha you have my email if you want to reach out to me at any time. I'm happy to hop on the phone. If the uh, phone is better, I'm happy to hop on, um, you know, you know, start with an email and, you know, again, um, our goal is to serve as many people from our community as, as possible. Awesome. Even during, you know, I didn't mention it, but even during, um, during the um, pandemic, when we were, when we reopened, we closed obviously in March when everything closed, we reopened that July and we were delivering cooked meals to family. We were delivering 1700 meals a week. So if you were a, a, a senior who want, it was mostly for seniors, but if, if you were a, um, a senior who wanted meals, we came on Monday, gave you five cooked meals and all you had to do is heat them up. And, and again, we work with a number of community organizations, Mars Park, um, we offer them to Mars Park, we offer them the Bronx Park East, we offer them to, to many, many different groups throughout the community. I work with Yahe on on getting, you know, because a lot of people, even the, our meals are kosher, and, you know, a lot of the people in his community would accept a kosher meal because it was halal for the most part. So hopefully we'll never have to do that again, though. <laughs> hopefully. I think it's our sentiments is exactly. Over again. Ever yeah. again. But um, at least it taught us something. It taught us a lot. Uh, yeah. Mr. Martin, thank you very, very much. Um, this presentation uh, has been extremely extensive. You answered a lot of information um, that we were, you know, that we had questions about. Um, later on, um, on this agenda, we will talk about a proposed event. Um, and then maybe I, I, I believe that um, you, you, you may fit into this event um, that we're gonna propose and hopefully have, but nevertheless, we're gonna continue to be in touch. Please continue, I'm gonna follow, Cynthia already followed um, the newsletter. We're all gonna um, subscribe and um, continue to share all the information. We will absolutely be in touch because we intend to be best friends. <laughs> you, know, you know, if you if you haven't come by our build, two things I'm gonna offer you. And if you can't take it, I understand that. Just tell me. Can but I, I, I I'd like to offer you all a free guest pass. So we do have day guest passes where you can use the gym, the pool, take classes. It's a $15 guest pass. But I, I would be happy to offer CB board members, the entire board, not just people on this call, a free guest pass to use at their leisure. You know, we're open seven days a week. And um, I'm happy to do that. And the other thing is, I think it's important that you know is, um, you know, we have a, an auditorium, it seats um, 175 with chairs, you know, we do health fairs, we do blood drives, and we don't charge other community organizations usually for the room itself. You know, your health, your health committee space. has done their health fair at Bronx House for years. We're happy to provide the space if it's available. So please keep that in mind too. I don't know if you knew that or not. I didn't, but we may need it to host one of our community board meetings. You never know, like our full board meetings. Um, but back to that guest pass. What if um, if we wanted to offer that guest pass or or give it to a little person in our community and a family member? Like you know, if we wanted to kind of do that, or or you know, to to one of those, I don't know students in our or youth in our neighborhood. Just a thought. Um, I'll, 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 and we can try to be flexible, but, but you, what we're offering you is a guest pass and it's usually used for adults and teens only. So you can't drop off a six year old with a guest no, pass and say, no, that's not what well, I mean. we have, have parents that do that sometimes. That's, that's not but, what I mean. But, you know, I just, I, 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 I have visited the Bronx house. I've never, you know, experienced, um, I actually was looking into, I'm making sure into the, the toddler swimming, um, program. Oh. 
for a family right. member and it was it's so so yes i mean an institution you guys are everything that you offer i just feel like you know if we could if we could uh, pay it forward in, in some way or shape or form that would be great we're happy to take um the guest passes um um bernadette i don't know how you feel about that um Okay. And, um, but thank you more, more than anything. Thank you for the year, your time. We will absolutely be in touch. And is it safe to say that we can move forward on, um, the next item on the agenda? May I just ask one quick question? Absolutely. Just little quick questions. And, um, I wanted to know if you do an annual benefit and, you know, we've asked you so many things that we want and we need, feel we need in the community. What do you need from the community board and from the community? We, we don't do a benefit anymore. We, we started doing benefits a number of years ago. And um, one of the things we've come to realize is that, you know, be benefits usually come with a high price tag for tickets for the event itself. And we found that many members of the community couldn't to couldn't do a benefit. And what most not for profits that serve communities like Pelham Parkway do is they do a benefit and 90 percent of the people that come to the benefit are not members of the community they're just people who want to help out and they'll write a check and they'll they'll make a donation um so we don't do um our we don't do a benefit our board is is generous there's a minimum contribution to be on our board and our board is very generous with the amount of money they give and then again you know we one of the reasons we operate day camp as we do is that's our benefit for the most part. We raise a lot of money on, we raise some significant money on day camp and that helps us keep the, the doors open, paying Con Ed its monthly fee and it's blackmail, but uh, <laughs> um, we, we don't do a benefit anymore. We, we did years and years ago. And in terms of what you need from us or what you would ask for? Um, if you can help publicize our programs, Free. Listen, the truth is, I, I'd love to. Our senior program is 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 not doing where, but no senior program is. We, you know, it's it's again. Nobody has to pay if you can't pay the dollar fifty a day. You, all you have to do is say, no, I I can't. It's a voluntary contribution. If you could spread the word about our senior center, you know, the classes there are great. Again, visit the website. You'll see the classes that we offer, from exercise classes to sitting. Uh, exercise classes, chair exercises, you know, arthritis classes, walking classes. Um, you can get the word out. You know, we we want to make sure that these programs continue. But the city um, has to quantify, you know, existence of programs. And you know, I, it would kill me to lose that senior center because there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of senior centers around. You know, when you're in the communal. You know, Rain has a bunch, and Jazza has a bunch, and and. You know, there's, there's always a competition and when things start getting tight at City Hall, you know, they start looking at, you know, unfortunately, the arts get cut and then seniors are right behind it for the most parks. As you know, parks, arts and seniors are right behind it, especially if there's an oversaturation of senior centers in the community. And Mr. Martin, um, we're going to end with Ms. Ferrara, but I do want a uh, quick question. Um, is there like a, do you guys, you said it was a dollar 50 a day. Voluntary some, contribution, voluntary contribution. And that's, and if I got on your website and I wanted to, uh, contribute, I can just do that. It's a big donate now button right on the main page on the top. All right. All right. Well, all right. All right. Thank and you. And by the way, the, the dollar 50 is for the meal only. So you can take, if you don't want to pay the dollar 50, you can, someone can come and take all the classes. And again, it, it's voluntary. Nobody okay. gets turned away. No, no, thank you. Thank you for that. That's super important for us. And that's exactly, I think, what we're looking for for our youth too. A big donate button for CB 11th youth on that Bronx House page. But no, thank you for that. And um, uh, yep, yeah, Ms. Ferrara. Okay. You know what, I'm, I'm Bernadette, before you go, um, we would be happy to post something about CB 11 on our, you know, on our site, whether it's its own, like a department, you know, um, we, we do lists, you know, one of the first pages on our main page is all the community, different community organizations we work with. But if you wanted to have like a, like an ad, we'd be happy to. 
post something on our website to, if that can help. Well, that's that's amazing. We were just um, just just in terms of New York City in general, looking for new board members for all CBs, right? But more than anything, I think that right now, collectively as a board, we're just trying to figure out the best way to provide resources to the youth in this community as yeah. well as the seniors. So we could work, you know, together in tandem. However, that materializes, we're, we intend to do that, and I think that was the intent of this conversation. And thank you very much. And I'm going to hand it over to Bernadette. It's a quick question because how you just said something that uh, um, I just had a quick question. Do does the Bronx House bring any of their programs to other senior centers? Um, no, I don't believe we do. Okay. I think we're all independent senior centers. We all compete with one another. For, for members and and you know if you don't if you don't know about senior centers members of senior centers um shop around so we post our we post our monthly schedule to uh, friday is women's history month um we post our menu on our website and right. somebody can go to our menu and see they're having chicken at bronx house on tuesdays and fridays P seniors menu shop it's it's not it's well the well reason why fact. Uh, so um, Monsignor Mont Fiorentino Homes, which is over on Amethyst Street. I know that they that's where the Venice Neighborhood Alliance has their community, uh, has their monthly meetings. But I was wondering if um, I know that they I'm wondering if there are programs that can go to to, you know, uh, to, to like Monsignor Fiorentino for either aerobics or crafts or whatever that could be offered to the seniors there. So that's that's what I was asking. I don't believe the city would allow that actually. Okay. But they're not going to okay. pay, you know, they're paying for programs in our building. And I'm not sure they would, you know, a speaker may be more of a possibility, but I don't think they would let us actually take programs outside. Okay. Um, what we could do if people were interested is, you know, we uh, I didn't mention it and I'm sorry I didn't is we also do pickups all throughout the community for seniors. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take I'm gonna be asking you to mail me a bunch of flyers that I can bring to the senior center and also to 1684 White Plains Road, and um, that that will hit the youth and the seniors, at least that I know, uh, you know, in um, in Van Ness, so or and to any other pro uh, areas in Van Ness that I th that I think could get more knowledgeable about what resources that you have. That are they're really wonderful. I mean, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. So, thank you all for everything Howie, you do. Howie, last final question. I promise. Are you a summer youth um, provider? We are not a contractor with Department of Youth and Community Development, but we work with uh, Marshall and Montefiore Community Center and take in summer youth employment kids. And we also work with the Washington Heights Y in Inwood and take in kids from their program. So we are a site. We put some of those kids in day camp to work in day camp. Some work in our building, some work in our senior center. So we will, we are always happy to take kids through summer youth employment. Great. And and actually, if you know, be, be, you know, they've cut the hours down. I think the max you can work is something like 20, 25 hours a week in summer youth. You know, because they're into volume as opposed to, you know, having kids work. The whole goal of summer youth was to keep kids off the street, you know, right. all, for all summer. And now it's, you know, it's cut back to the younger kids are get, getting, you know, 20 hours and the older ones get a max of 25. And we'll actually hire them and pay them for the extra time. And, you know, that's $15 an hour. It's not, uh, it's not yeah. cheap. But we, we often will hire them for additional work and and many of them will will take jobs with us during the school year in our after school programs and our summer sonic in our pro sonic programs. We we um, we try to even get some of them involved if they're fairly good swimmers. We'll each hire them as lifeguards and lifeguards are always always a job for a life. I've told my my, my oldest son is 28 too and he was a lifeguard from 15. The day they turned 15, my boys took lifeguard training because there's always jobs. Yeah. Thank that's you. That's amazing. If you could share that with us, and I mean, I'm sure we can find it, but that's also important information to put out there. But that's that's great. Um, I'm sorry, Cynthia, were you about to say something? Nope, nope. I was just saying thank you. <laughs> okay, Mr. Martin. 
Thank you very much for your time today. And thank you for everything you do for our community as well. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do um, for our community and, and know that we're here to help each other in any Absolutely. way. So any ideas that you may have that you want to just run by us and any ideas, hopefully that we have, we'll be knocking on your door. Um, but we're here to do this together. Thank you so much. And um, we're going to move on to the next um, agenda item. And that okay. is the gallery session. Thank you, Mr. Martin. My pleasure. Bye bye. Bye bye. And so everyone here that's on uh, our call and in our committee, we did not receive um, any requests to speak this evening for our gallery session. Not that um, you know we need it, but I just wanted to say that. Does anyone want to share in the gallery? Oh, hi, sorry, I didn't raise my hand. Um, it's Danielle again. So I just wanted to know if this is just specifically geared towards budget or so, can I ask another question? So you can ask your question, but this is the Community Development and Budgetary Priorities Committee meeting. Any question that you ask, if we can't answer that, then we'll direct you to the, you know, to the chair of the committee that it probably best pertains to. We are also joined um, this evening by the chairperson of our community board, Ms. Bernadette Ferrara. So um, she, she'll she you know be happy to chime in um, if whatever, if the question you have pertains to a different committee. So please ask your question. Okay, thank you. So oh, um, before you proceed, I just sure. have to preface it by saying that our gallery sessions are um, timed and there are two minutes. Um, and per individual, um, we're, we're, we're this particular committee. I don't even want to say that we're, you're free to speak, but I just wanted you to know that just in case someone said that, um, your two minutes were up and they were, it was a surprise to you. Okay. No problem. It shouldn't be more than two minutes. So, um, I've been in, uh, or a, a community member in district 11 for maybe about eight years now, and it's changed drastically. And so my main concern, um, cause you know, I commute to work, I drive, the intersection um, between Pelham Parkway and Boston Road, like when I cross the street, at, you know, in the early hours of the morning to go to Planet Fitness is so ironic. We talked about that, like I'm about to get hit. And, you know, and then when I'm going to work, when I have to drive to my District 10 school on Fordham Road, you know how crazy that is, you know, during peak hours. And so I see children, you know, because I'm an educator, I see children fearful of crossing the street. And so like I've seen traffic officers before, but now I really don't see anyone really like, you know, helping the flow of traffic. And so that's my main concern. Also considering the construction that is continuous, you know, through the year round here. So I just wanted to know if there was any talks of like, you know, having the community or like supporting the community in that way. Cause I feel like it's, it's very dangerous. So that was like my main concern, but. I don't know if that can be addressed today. Well, thank you for that, um, for sharing that concern. Um, I believe, um, you know, we have a transit and public safety committee um, that has addressed this um, on a regular basis, but, um, or Ms. Rinch is like, no, no, no. Um, but but I would, I would say that, um, I would welcome you to maybe take a look at this month's um, session, right? But we we talked about a lot of things. But um, Bernadette, I'll let you jump in because I think I did, were you were you saying something and I wasn't. I, no. no, no, no. I was just I was agreeing with as far as with public safety. Yes, uh, it 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 probably Mail's would up. be. It yeah. would probably be a good subject of public safety, uh, as least a place to start. The to be discussing that, but it definitely will. Um, it, it will. It, it, this is something that could be put on the agenda and discussed further, trying to come up with solutions, find different ways exactly that um, that could be addressed. Because I think if I think if you're far if you're far enough away from the school, you will not get a um, traffic. You know, somebody there to help the children. Um, I know that that goes, it has to be close by the school. And I, I think it would be, I think it's like two block, 105 is two blocks away from White Plains Road. So uh, that's why I mean, it, it might need to be discussed and find different ways to make that happen to resolve that. So Danielle, uh, I, I welcome you to um, uh, 
attend the public safety. I mean, our April calendar is up, is up and to, to see when the when the the public safety is is coming up and sign up for the gallery and have your questions and um, you know pose it there to get a um, a solution. Mm -hmm. I'm checking for oh. you, Danielle, right now to see if um, what the um, what the calendar date for public safety is in April. But um, I think that's um, as Bernadette just uh, suggested, that is the, the best place to start. Also, our full board meetings also just like this today, you know, so um, so thank you for that. And let me just take a really quick look to see also, public and, and also. Sorry, right. I just wanted to, I, I'll put it in the chat. Public safety is meeting April 18th and I'll put it in the chat for you. Okay. And also, yeah, and also, yeah, you put it in there also DOT. So there's two places. Start one place, you know, see which, you know, which one it gives the best, best solutions. It could even be. Thank you. I mean, I have other inquiries, but I like, if I have any other, like, you know, concerns just regarding the overall. <laughs> experience of living in community district 12 like how can i get my questions answered just that email that you that you suggested you mentioned no. 12 did you mean 11 i'm sorry not 12 i'm so sorry it's late um 11. Well, i was just gonna say that <laughs> that's fine sorry. this is a good start this is a good start always okay. our full board meetings you're you know we're we're available all of our um, our calendars are up on our cb11 bronx cb11 website right um and so you'll find it we we're typically always hybrid um so we give the option to come in person or you know if we're, you're not in person then um if we're not in person then we'll let you know then you can join us this way but there is not just one meeting overall right you seem to have a lot of different types of concerns so i invite you to just you know, to attend our committee meetings, all of them, or as many as you can, mainly our full board meeting, and then, you know, um, schedule time in the gallery and, you know, share with us, because that's what we're here to, you know, that's what we're here for, to listen. I appreciate and to share. it. And 311 told me to contact you guys, so that's oh. also why I'm here as well. Well, good. <laughs> so they've been so they guys <laughs> out. It, trust me, me and 311 are, are, are great friends. So, friends? Uh, yeah, 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 we're friends. So, Dan yeah. Danielle, welcome. sorry. Might welcome. I also welcome. suggest going to Zakaro's office? Um, you know, I mean, I, 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 I don't think there's anything wrong with kind of spreading your concern across different areas. And if you can put something in writing to the community board and put something in writing to Zakaro's office, then at least you're putting the word out there in one place. Yeah, Thank you. And, and also, it also wouldn't be a bad idea to write a more like a detailed letter and, and regrets and concerns concerning what you're seeing, what you're experiencing and an email to the community board. So, you know, possibly Jeremy or even the chairs can direct it to the proper official or person overseeing that. So by the time we get to the next, you know, next month to the full board meeting or the next committee meeting, we probably have a few answers for you to, to present. Right. And thank you, Danielle, or Miss Danielle, I should say, for everything that you do for our, for our, for our children. I try. I see a lot, so I try to, you know, make I sure. Work, I work outside of this. <laughs> I, I'm I'm in that area too, and um and and we're so appreciative of teachers and and all your efforts. So thank you, and yeah, we're here. We're a resource. Thank you. You're welcome, Ms. Finch. Yes, thank you. Um, first, for more some more suggestions for Danielle. Um, you know they did add a pedestrian island in the crosswalk area between, um. Boston Road East Side and Boston Road West Side at that intersection. Um, but you can also contact the community liaison of the construction project, who is very responsive, um, and just be very specific with her about your concerns. Unfortunately, you know, we used to have a monthly meeting about the construction project and all its related issues that was attended by representatives from all the agencies involved and community board members and local community association members, but it was disbanded, discontinued due to the bad behavior of some of the community members. Um, 
which was a very, it was a very regrettable experience. Wow. So, but I know. But so it's luckily, interesting. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, yes, I have to look up her email address. Um, and I will do that after I stop, after I finish my two minutes. Um, there's also a group transportation alternatives that is looking into Boston road and all the problems all along Boston road. Um, they're a citywide group, but you just find them online, just search transportation alternatives. Um, and also a request, um, for our chair, the transportation committee needs to up its game. They should be meeting every month, no matter what. They should have membership from every part of the district. They shouldn't just be confined to the concerns of car owners and car drivers. They should be talking to bus riders and pedestrians and kids. I mean, of all the committees, the one I think that has the most to do at the moment. They should be dealing with our parking issues, which are involved in every single development that's happening in this community. Every single controversy involves parking. Our transportation committee really probably needs a new chair and really needs to step it up because that's the place we could go for solutions to these kinds of problems, but they're just absent, it seems checked out. I don't know. Um, and then my other question was, I'm not quite clear on how we submit ideas for the budget to the committee. Like, how are we supposed to do that as we get new ideas and hear ideas from the community? So, um, at the end of the agenda, I was just gonna, I was gonna talk about the, um, the form that I created, but you can just email okay. us you, or you can email me. I put my email in the chat. You can okay. email me. You can let me know if it's a capital expense, if it's, um, um, if it's, uh, if it's capital or if it's an expense request. Um, you know, if it's something you, you know, the, you, you know, I know, you know, Ms. French, if it's, uh, an infrastructure, it's a capital, if it's, um, more programming, it's an expense request. You can just submit that to me. I would suggest, you know, in the, in, I would say by next month, we'll have, I'll have the form, um, available, right. To in, in detail so that it just says what agency is going to be responsible for this request. Um, we need to know exact location, like cross streets, address, as much as we can, um, and as much information as we can with regards to the ask. Um, if you have statistics, maybe that you can cite, anything and everything is going to be very beneficial so that when our budgetary request gets to DCP and then ultimately the mayor, they're, they're, they're seeing, okay, they're breaking this down. They understand. So, so you can send it to me and you can even also send it directly to DCP. I would say, send it to us. Um, we'll put it all together for the fiscal year 25 and then, um, and then we'll submit that. Cause right now it's going to be for 25, not for 24. Right. Because one of the requests I've just come across is um, servicing for the temporary porta potties in Zimmerman Playground. So, desperate. Yes. Yes, and so that's something that uh, we discussed at last week's uh, full board meeting that we would we would in include in our. Not, not, no, I I don't mean the renovation of the house. I mean, you know, the now servicing. They have, okay. Now they have I thought I thought it was for the I thought it was for the house. Yeah, I thought oh, that, that we did discuss that. But my other request is okay. Is so if we can't the get the renovation. The temporary porta potties that are there need a more thorough cleaning servicing yeah and someone has to pay for it right it's, it's a dire need i've come to realize and the stand up to violence guys are on it they say yes this is a big need because they have porta potties but they're in terrible condition because they're just not cleaned enough i don't know i don't think they have a robust enough cleaning service for them 
that's so that. It's kind of a, it's a small thing, but it's a very important thing because no one's using the porta potties because they're in such right. disgusting condition, but they're paying to have them there, but right. they just need them. Like I even looked up online porta potties use and versus, you know, cleaning schedules and they just don't have a cleaning schedule that matches the level of the use that they're seeing. Right. So, so it's a two part request, right? It's the reconstruction or the removal, right. That's one thing. Right? And right. then if, if we can't get that, then it's no, no, it's just until we get that until have right. Porta potties. So, what I'm what what I wanted to convey with regards to the budget is that it's not something that we can ask for right now that they're going to give us. They have to be added to the budget. So then the service and the rebuild is a is an ask. It's not like oh I hear you we're going to go there tomorrow because it wasn't in their budget to begin with. Is is what I'm what I'm what I'm trying to you know I guess convey. The right. other thing. Um, I wanted to share with regards to the porta potty, and I'm not, and I'll share with the full board. But I did, um, I did hear um, a segment on WNYC yesterday in regards to New York City parks, and the New York City parks, it, um, they're moving forward. They're 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 no longer calling the restrooms comfort zones anymore because that has a, a, a connotation from a, a historic connotation that is negative. And so in addition to that, they are offering, and I believe it's called a Baltimore blue. I'm going to do more research on that, but they, I don't believe, and I think that maybe this is the reason why we didn't get the, um, the funding that we needed for the reconstruction of the restrooms, because I believe that in the future, they have an, uh, something else in mind with regards to portable restrooms. So I'm just sharing that. It's just information that I'm coming across right now, but this is something that we'll include in the budget and we'll ask. And then also, finally, I did reach out to Parks uh, on uh, March uh, 11th, and I did request for them to attend this meeting. Um, and I did follow up with them, I believe it was um, the March 21st. Um, circling back and I'm going to continue to try to see if we can have them come for April and, um, so they can answer our questions. Thank you. That's great. Um, and the reason that, uh, house didn't get the, whatever you call it house, the restrooms didn't get in this part of the reconstruction was that the budgeting fell out of, because it. Zimmerman got removed from Councilman Figley's district. He had budgeted for it, but then he couldn't use the money for it because it wasn't in his district anymore. And Riley had already assigned his whole budget to other projects and he couldn't take money away from other projects. So that was the I reason. I recall you saying that. I recall now, now I recall you saying that. I guess yesterday's uh, what I heard yesterday was like, oh, wait a second. Well, maybe there was, but yes, I do recall. No. So, um, so that's what I have to share on on behalf of that. Um, thank you. Yes, thank and I you think one reason the parks department wasn't here tonight was that they had another meeting. They had a another community input meeting for another park in Councilman Feely's district. Okay, but not in our district. Okay, so maybe we can, you know, um, so the next meeting, you know, um, is already on the calendar, our next meeting. So if you know, if you have information, um, and maybe if you know that there are going to be any other place, that, that'll be helpful because we have to, you know, I mean, it, it'd be great just to have them before the public hearing and just, uh, you know, but Jeremy um, did mention that they're typically very good at meeting with us during the summer. But for me, that means that that's after the budget. And, you know, then we're talking about the next year. So, um, okay. Does anyone else, um, would anyone else like to share? Okie dokie. So we're going to move on to the next, um, 
line item on the agenda and that's the motions um so we talked about the draft of the december 2022 and january 23 uh committee um agendas um if there um does anyone um want to talk about it uh do we approve do we want to move forward you have somebody second the motion yeah i'm waiting that's for my chair. So <laughs> I got the second. I second you. Um, <laughs> I'm waiting for Malcolm. I think we're <laughs> suffering a delay. Um, so uh, you second the motion on both uh, December 2022 right. and January 23. Right, right. Okay. I heard it. <laughs> well, thank you, Mrs. Meyer. <laughs> We appreciate that. And thank you for joining and for being a part of our committee. Uh, it's gonna grow soon enough, but I think everybody um, you know, got a lot out of it. Um, as far as old business is concerned, I just wanted to update everyone finally. We have the um, English survey, the Community Development and Budgetary Priorities Community Survey in fillable format, finally on the CB11 website. We also have the Albanian on the website. Um, that is also fillable. And then we, uh, the Spanish is also up, but that's not fillable as of yet. There, you know, I mean, there was only but so much we could do. Mr. Gray, I saw your hand up. Oh, that was an accident. I pressed oh, the wrong okay, emoji. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, as I just well. put in the um, chat the email of the community oh, liaison for the reconstruction. Ms. Um, Danielle, oh. did you see that? Yes, I did. Thank you so much. So just email them and then tell them. Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. As detailed as possible. Will you know, do. But please I'll put pictures too. In our meetings. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank and, you. Um, you can also so I live call right her. on. I live right where the construction is. Like I know I see the Facebook. Oh, post. okay. Yeah, I'm right there on Thwaites, so I see it all. Oh, definitely. Okay, so call her, <laughs> yeah. and you can even, um, you know, she'll just talk to you on the phone, and you could even, she comes over to the construction site every single day, so okay, you perfect. could even meet with her in person. Okay, thank you so much. Ms. Finch. Done. I have, right. I have some, I have an old business question. Yes, ma'am. Do you, um, the... The PDF that went to with all the asks to the budget, the mayor's budget, you know, for. Uh, it PDF. wasn't a PDF per se. We actually had to go into the link uh, and input all the information via their link. Did you get a printout for yourself? Did you of of the final questions? We we did, and um, we also addressed uh, the DCP in regards to a lot of the discrepancies. I don't know if that's where we're kind of like going into. Like, I just would like to have a copy of it. Okay. I, I, I just wondering if anybody else, because if anybody else should ask, I was looking for it and I couldn't find it. That's why. Yes, 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 yes. So I, I know that I have it. Um, I'll, I'll go back um, and I'll look and I'll share. Um, but we did get a, a printout and I, I also um, addressed um, a couple of discrepancies with the DCP. And unfortunately, although they, you know, although on their end, they're like, we're really excited to announce that um, the uh, form and via the link is going to be available early this year, like in June, so that we can go in and make corrections. Um, um, they did they did attest to the fact that these glitches sometimes happen and that kind of, you know, overall, not just for us, but overall um, community boards across the city, all 52, I'm sure are kind of like, but what he did say was um, if it shows up like that, the um, um, office of the uh, mayor's budget, they tend to kind of really look at it a little bit more in detail and then they'll question and then they'll, you know, refer it to the different agencies. So at least there's a second eye, but I'll share that um, the recap that I got um, from the submission. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just, you could, you could email it to me or, or yes. make it available. Uh, if uh, on the page where you have the surveys, you know, the information, if that's on the resource page. Uh, of community board where you have yeah, the yeah. surveys? Yeah, I do recall we got one. So let me just say that um, I'm 50% sure we did because I recall that we, I got a printout. I'm, I'm, but it's a. I think I have a. 
I think yeah, I have a copy I, of it. I, I want to say yeah, my Jeremy should have it also. Me, but I don't want to say, you know, like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. whatever. I, I sent it as an email. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I do recall. I just want to have something in front of me. That's You're going to have it. You're going to All right, thank you. Yeah, 100%. I, I think Jeremy has a copy also. Then um, I should so. bug him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I got it too. Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, was that Mr. Miguel Dunn? has it also. <laughs> I'm the only one who doesn't have it. I couldn't find it. So well, you're the only one that submitted your request at like uh 1229. No, I'm just kidding. I'm messing with you. No, I did it six hours the night before. I went through uh, yes, I remember. <laughs> no, I know. I'm like sure couldn't today. sleep. No problem. Um, Thank you. And then we're going to move forward. Um, so, oh, so then just some quick updates. There is a form that uh, a site visit request form that was um, was created. That's something Jeremy will share with you, Bernadette, and then the entire board. He thought it was something that would be beneficial for everyone if, you know, if if the if the board and or different committees wanted to do that, once he does share it, I suggest maybe our request, just let us know if we can move forward for our committee because we're happy to do site visits if, you know, if it's something that um, the community wants. And then um, also there is a form for the budgetary priority requests that I sent to Jeremy as well. Um, that's still pending, everybody. It's pending, it's not. Um, just so that we can offer that to the community in terms of capital and expense, so it makes it easier for the community to understand their asks. And then finally, on to new business. Malcolm? Oh, you want me to present it? <laughs> yes, sir, go ahead. Oh, man. All right, so Serena and I were having a conversation um, in regards to, you know, ways that we can possibly foster more community input, more community conversation, and the things that we would like to see our community. You know, many times we get proposals as to what's coming to our community, and very little do we get to say what do we want in our community and from our community. So we are proposing possibly creating a um, vision, community vision board uh meeting um possibly within what may june um where you know we can invite different community members different community organizations different elect elected offices to partake in this vision board creation so we can define you know what it is that we'd like to see in our community within the next five ten years um and what projects do we want to see in our community so how this will look will be like you know we'll possibly get like arts and like you know the arts and crafts stuff papers you know materials and every member that attends will create a vision board of what they they like to see out of their community um and then we can use that as a way to foster the conversation a little bit more um and to you know help us help guide us into what our priorities will be when we are submitting the budget request for the next year and also it will um it will help with civic engagement um across the board with our youth and our parents right because they're then providing right. their vision for our community as they see it where it we're we're looking at it in a way where it's going to be a cultural kind of event as well we'll invite um maybe you know local high schools elementary schools maybe do a couple of maybe invite them to do spoken word what their what their community looks like it's supposed to be a very interactive um and and fun event but at the very end what we want to what what we're going to gain is clear insight from and I think we're going to keep it in line with the mayor's budgetary priority sort of um request right there's no there's no request that um even I mean he started at 11 um I think we could even take it you know whoever a 6 year old you know wants to share their vision then as long as we can share our vision for district 11 um overall outside of the stats that are given to us on the registrar and the budgets and all of that we have a real concrete idea directly from the mouth of our community as to what we want to do so that's something that we want to present and I guess um 
Right now, we want to put forth a motion um, so that um, we can present um, to the full board to pass uh, for June um, to do this event. Um, and, and we'll conceptualize it a little bit more in detail. We'll break it down with the objectives and all of that. But um, that's where we're at right now. I will take so I'll, I'll make them. I'll make them. Print, print yeah, yeah. This is this is very similar to um, in 2014 and 2017, with the Metro North had the community engagement for their inter for the workshops for how they saw what they saw in their community, which is very you know it was it's the same church different pew, so this is our community and there were different stations um, for different. Um, ideas well you know surrounding areas uh education whatever so and the community had uh their different they made different interactive fun ways of engaging whether it just be everybody talking and then you know having your whiteboard and having that information or it was input in a different way so something like this is really it's really good and you can have different um, it was very successful. They had they had two or three of them uh, for the Park Chester Vanna station, and then for the Morris Park station. So Bernadette, I have a question because you said you you mentioned Metro North, right? Was this an initiative that started um, via the MTA or transit, or was because city planning? City planning. So I think there's a little there's a bigger there's a bigger difference because there there is no intention with what we're trying to do. No, I'm just saying as far as operational, that's it. Right, the idea is the same. And I, I've been a part of a lot of these kind of like vision board sort of like, what do you want for your community right. sort of things. But I think that this right here comes from a place of just let us know. Just, just let us know. What do you need? Even and it's like the community survey. You have a survey. I keep saying it's there, right? But let's take it a step further. Let's see what you envision. Do you want more of this? Do you want more of that? There isn't a Metro North that I don't think outside of that is going to come down the pike or more parking or anything to that nature. But I just I, wanted I, to say that. I was just giving that as an as an example of, and it was very successful. So the work the whether you say it's a workshop or a vision board or however it's it's just getting collaborative community input so that's i was just saying it was successful when they they did that and i think the same way that this idea would be successful because a vision board is a is a positive it's a very positive input so that was just all I was saying about that. No, no, I and I totally, but I, I felt the need to kind of sort of separate the two because for, um, but I- Just an example. Yeah, yeah, so thank you for that. Does, um, Malcolm, do you want to say anything? Um, Ms. Finch says, Bronx Park East Community Association would be glad to do the community vision board at one of our meetings. I've done one and it would be exciting. Okay, so the idea is to do this um, in June, right before the kids, you know, get out of school, right? Um, and so we're gonna be planning this and facilitating this, but we just wanted to present it to the committee and to everyone that was here, kind of gauge um, some, get feedback. And um, we're gonna, you know, plan this out a little bit more in detail and then hopefully get, um, um, do you think, uh, Bernadette, that we would need the full board approval for this? Um, I don't think you, I, I'm not too sure, but I don't okay. think that you'll need a full board, a board approval, but I'll double check with Jeremy, but I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure. I think if the committee, I think if the committee, uh, puts its, puts its specifics down, et cetera, that it could be presented at the full board. Okay. Okay, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. Uh, motion, or do we just do it? I'm sorry, because my computer's my internet is in and out right now. So reason. there was a motion. It was passed, Malcolm. Um, Perfect. there was a motion to move forward. You and Miguel second. <laughs> the motion to have a community vision. I was right there. Set. I'm sorry. I said I was right there. You were. You were. You were. You were. Um, and that's, 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 that's it for this, um, March 29th community development and budgetary priority committee meeting. Um, 
if anyone has anything else they may want to share, we're happy to yeah. hear. If not, no, I'll say yeah. Okay. No, no. I'll say that we'll, we'll, fl we'll flush out the event and then it should be, we should have it ready before the next full board meeting to, to present to everyone. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Well, Sounds thank wonderful. you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone that attended. Thank you for the feedback. I think this was a very productive meeting. Yes. It is, let me just take a look. It is 9 45 on Nine. March 29th, and meeting is adjourned. Bye. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Great meeting. Thank you. Good job, Serena. Thank you. Good job, Malcolm. <laughs> All right.